Hi and welcome to another episode of the Getting Things Done podcast from Vital Learning. I am, as always, Morten Røvik and I am, as always, here with my good friend and colleague Lars Rotskill Hendriksen. Privet, Lars. Privet, Mr. Morten. Happy to be here with you and with all of our listeners and viewers. We always start off with a quick reminder of the purpose of this podcast, which is to help you learn GTD or become even better GTDers. If you are new to GTD, we always recommend you go back and listen to episodes one through six to get an introduction to the basics of GTD, the five steps. Today's episode number is 86, and today's episode is titled Designing the Ideal GTD Workspace. Indeed, it's going to be a, uh, an interesting uh, episode, I think, because we will try and lay out the basics of what we think is the best practices of setting up and help you think about how you can set up your workspace the, in an optimal way. But before we get there, I would like to um, ask you to subscribe and like us. If you subscribe and like, we will get more likes and more people will find us. So if you're on... Uh, on your podcast player, please please do that and uh, suggest uh, if you can, if you want, you can give us a rating. Maybe five is a good number. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking just a little, but yes. <laughs> enough? Is it enough? enough Should I go I for think, it's I think. enough. <laughs> I think they are. Oh, I think listeners. I will migrate us back towards today's topic, <laughs> <laughs> okay. which is to, to <laughs> which is to give you um just a quick background on how this uh, this topic came up. Actually, this mm. came from a um, a coaching client. On a more serious mm. note, um, came from mm. a from a coaching client who um, was impacted by a, a hurricane and and now um, rebuilding the uh, their house and and you know came came back to me with the question of what to keep in mind when when designing this new office. So, taking the the positive perspective on the, the that event, um, what possibilities what opportunities might there be now to you know take a fresh start so this 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 is a space we've designated for the office how do we set everything up optimally to to mm -hmm. make sure that they that they work best for us for where you know this uh, couple shared um, you know two people sharing a um, an office both GCDers um, and how how to, how to actually design this so uh, so um, we've been uh, emailing a bit about that and I thought well maybe we could actually make that into an episode so that's really the, the background for today's talk mm. and um, one of the things that we discussed briefly in the pre-show word that I said is that I think that to become or to be intentional about your workspace is um, you know, if you want to be a good GGD or that's I think uh, one of the keys and uh, I will give you a keyword for that is that, uh, you know, design your, your workspace intentionally to remove friction. Hmm. Does that Good make one. sense to you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Make sure that it's so easy. I was just looking through some old notes. So just a, a slight detour. I have a... I have a, a section in my digital reference system where I throw stuff in that I'm not sure where to put, but I don't want to lose it. So it's, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, I think it started out as quotes and now it's fun facts, tips, tricks, quotes, and something else. It's really a mix <laughs> of all, all different kinds of things. We're just, you know, fun, interesting tidbits that I came across uh, over the, uh, over the years. Um, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> ran, ran across that one and, and, um, it was just just fun to see uh, these these older older thoughts and also how they related in uh, in today's topic. Mm, yes. So uh, we need to also discuss the um, functionality of or, or of an office. How should it function? And um, one of the things that I've been thinking about that we also discussed in the pre-show was that. You have to, uh, for many people now, it's a reality that you have a home office and an office office and maybe a road office. And these three needs to play well together. 
and uh, David would recommend you to set up, you know, your home office as you set up your, your work office. But if you are in an open landscape with free seating um, and uh, you can't ar arrange your uh, clean desk and free seating, then you can't arrange the, the desk to become yours. So it must be kind, kind of a an hybrid of the road warrior setup, I would guess. Yeah. Um, and and one reflection that I've been doing now is that a lot of the people that I meet and talk to has a, actually a better setup in their home office than that, what they have mm. uh, in their uh, office office. Um, and I think you have seen the same, Lars? Mm, yeah, yeah, especially that free seating thing is, is really a, a challenge when you are dependent of so many different components that you want to have at hand or as part of your, your workspace when you sit down as a gtd -er to do your work. Um, there are some things I would like to have here and um, obviously with uh, free seating. I come across that pretty, pretty frequently um, that people really, you know, miss that being able to to both you know set up their systems and make sure that everything is the way that they want it to be have their in tray have you know um have the the gtd workflow map hanging yeah. on the wall next to them right yeah. put your dagger <laughs> in your the desk family so this is yeah. my space <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and that seems to be the case also for in, in 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 some companies at least that you know there are some it's free seating but not really free there's like if yeah. you take that one then 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 john is gonna gonna, gonna stand there next to you when <laughs> he shows up and he's gonna look at you, at you until you leave <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so but yeah it, it is certainly a, a challenge um and that obviously then sets up some different requirements for the people using it and making it a more mm. portable office so perhaps back in the day even for david with all of his uh, travels that he he did for for so many years he would have a, a very you know flexible system that he could set up really anywhere and that's that's perhaps what what has come to for at least for the people that are um, in offices with that uh, free seating yeah and, and um, so I think that the key to, to have a functional, um, you know, free sitting, um, clean desk setup is to have the setup with you. So mm. you need to have something that could uh, be your capture tool. Um, and, you know, if you look at uh, the, the capture tool, it's probably one of the most important things to, to have either, you know, where, wherever you are as a GTD or mm -hmm. just to get things out of your head when it, they pop up uh, or show up. And then uh, then um, that should be going with you. So so yeah. I've I've um, I, I, I've I've gone fancy. I'm, I'm using now. Ooh. It's, yes. Well, I'm just going to show you. This is uh, this is um, uh, a Toma. And for those of you who are not on video, you can't see this, but I'm showing uh, an Atoma um, uh, notebook and my trusted fountain pen. And when I'm, uh, it nice. gives me the feeling of being uh, exclusive when I'm out and about. And uh, mm. if not, I'm using my uh, my Remarkable, uh, yeah. where I have um, my notes set up. But for as a free form capture tool, I. I do enjoy the Atoma uh, mm. when I'm, for instance, at a cafe or at an, uh, working or when I'm in, a, you know, waiting for a client to arrive. Um, I sit in a lobby or, um, you know, in a meeting room waiting. Then this is my preferred uh, way of capturing. I have those two that um, when I sit down to work. So mm. um, um, what do you use, Lars, as the, your road warrior setup for? Hmm. Well, I think when it comes to to capturing, um, I still most of the time will will capture to my my watch. Uh, for the most mm -hmm. part, I, I switched back to start using uh, Brain Toss once again. Uh, heard mm -hmm. from from many of you that you know the instability issues that I came across uh, when I was using it a few years ago those have been mm -hmm. ironed out, um, and it, it, that seems to be the case. So I, I tend to use that a lot. Um, mm -hmm. When it comes to paper and writing things down, I have my trusted GCD wallet still. Um, mm -hmm. That still uh, goes with me. And um, I'll tend to use that a lot in just in settings where it doesn't make sense to speak to your watch or mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense to bring out your phone, uh, sending mm -hmm. the wrong signals that you might be doing doing something else. Um, mm -hmm. And if I'm sitting down or if in, in coaching and I really want to sort of 
enjoy the <laughs> the capture process uh, somewhat mm -hmm. similar to what you said with having a, a really nice uh, pen that I got from a, uh, a client. Um, I have this, I'm going to butcher the name, so apologies both to the German listeners and really anyone else listening. Leuchtturm, I think is the... <laughs> <laughs> is the name of it um I have no idea, they make so. some no they're so nice they and it was really um you know uh, way too expensive i think i paid what's um like 30 30 40 euros maybe for well, one one small book that um, mm -hmm. then uh, then using has very nice yellowish paper it's uh, glued so i'm not you know feeling too bad when i rip out a page and the mm -hmm. paper is nice and crisp and yeah so when i really want to be uh, be fancy <laughs> fancy <Yeah>. lawyers then uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll bring that one out um but yeah. you know the the um, the the other side of that is that i might sometimes have a tendency not to use it because it was pretty expensive to me and mm -hmm. um is this idea good enough to be <laughs> is it worth that that expensive sheet of paper or you know mm -hmm. that that kind of thing but i, I I've, I've you know gotten over that hump when uh, yeah, when i started using it more yeah and it is it is the feeling of um i i have people saying to me oh i have to buy something and it costs so much and i said how much is your ids worth how's <clears> your <throat> how, how much is your you're f feeling relaxed and calm and present how much is that worth and uh, how much worth is it to you to have something you love touch and feel mm, yeah and use? exactly yeah. so so i'm i'm just saying that uh, don't get a, don't let that you know the yeah well it's on <laughs> you can get really on you know when it comes to fountain pens you can pay like uh, um, a million dollars for a fountain pen literally and uh, mm. that may not that may be a little um, <laughs> exaggerated but how much that, is your ideas worth morton <laughs> yeah yeah well not one million dollars as, as okay um, well maybe maybe i don't know that yet but i've i'm not come That's across true. um a one million dollar idea that i've well i might have lost one <laughs> that before <laughs> <laughs> but to um, to have um, you know what we are alluding to now, what we call the basic GTD setup in an in a workspace, if it is portable or you know office or home office, then um, a capture tool is necessary. And there, the only reason I, I didn't mention my capture wallet is because we closed our web shop capturewallet.com. And then people are, oh, where is where can I buy? It's mm -hmm. we get an email a week about this, and uh, I'm sorry, but we did that, and uh, so I'm not going to, you know, show give a show candy to a to a hungry kid. <laughs> so <laughs> we will not talk about that I'm anymore. Sorry, I did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> So uh, hate mail can be re related to <laughs> Lars at vitallearning.dk <laughs> if you want um, to punish him. Um, no, but um, to have a capture tool um, is necessary. It could be the um, wallet. It can be um, you know a piece of paper. It can be an, a notebook. It can be a remarkable. It can be a, anything really. A tablet of any sort that you can take notes. And the idea is that th this is where you capture your ideas and thoughts of what you need to get done. And um, another thing that I, I um, recommend people to have and that I also have in my bag is a capture, uh, not, not a capture, but a, um, a travel in tray, which is actually mm. a, a travel. Um, I will show it on the camera now because I have an extra one line here. It's uh, just a you know a plain a folder. It's red. And it says inbox, and um, you can capture things inside it. And if you've been to one of our courses before, you you will have gotten one. So that that is um, handy. It's just a Manila folder with just it has colors. It's not in Manila color. That's the only difference. And it has it's a way where you can throw your notes when you're ready with them or your your piece of paper inside, and then you will either empty it from that uh, capturing sorry where you 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 clarify and organize them from there or if you're on the road or when you get back to the office or home office if you have an in-tray that should also be something you have um, and what do you have for in-tray um, or an inbox uh, when you mm -hmm. travel yeah. 
same same for me same. um have the 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 good old one that uh, um, you know was used globally as well there the red in the folder um yep. so i have that still it's um pretty worn i don't think it says yep. in anymore as it used to but yeah. it still still works still fine still and um mm. yeah yeah and in my bag i also carry uh, a couple of the old system folders um that that mm. we used to have one for support material and one for um stuff that i need to bring from the office to to my home mm. yes and and for those uh, and i've seen uh, some really fancy uh uh, in trace and uh, one I really like that I, I wish I remember because I didn't capture that. Of course, dummy me, <laughs> but uh, I I've seen a an an A4 size or you know letter size um, in tray in leather. That's uh, so it's it's uh, flat when you have it in your bag, but when you take it out, you can f just flip the corners and it kind of mm. raises up and uh, and. Uh, and it becomes a, a, a travel in tray. If that's kind of like the, the nice. feeling of exclusivity, you should never underestimate the feeling of something <laughs> make you feel good. You want to use it. So um, no, yeah. good one, good one. I'm sure yeah. someone out there will will know which one that is. Podcast at G, uh, sorry, a podcast at Vital Learning DK. <laughs> Please that's inform the, us. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Send send yeah, us exactly. if if you know what I'm talking about. But it's a rather thin letter like a sheet when it's folded out and then just flip it up. It's kind of some um, um, metal that helps it stand up. I don't know mm. how that works, but it's it looks Magic. looked juicy and I want to <gasps> thank you. So <laughs> the basic but otherwise setup on, of, on the go, um, I, I would mm. normally, um, you know, in many cases, so what I was uh, was thinking of, so what do I actually do when I travel? I get to the mm. um, get to the hotel, get to my room. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll plug in the different chargers. I'll set up my my iPad Pro. Um, mm -hmm. and, and most of the time, that'll be my my capture tool. I don't use a lot of paper when I'm on the go. So mm -hmm. many times I will capture just simply directly into my my system and use that as my yeah. as my workspace as well. Mm. No, I'm I'm also capturing digitally when I'm uh, on the go, and uh, but it is it is I and as you I use my my Apple Watch and I use my iPhone, and as for those of you who follow the podcast will remember maybe is that I've switched uh, now recently to Apple Reminders. I'm still there; it still works good, and uh, I like it. And especially, I like the the Siri integration where I can just talk to my uh, my watch or um my phone and telling uh, hey lady um, remind me of something and it will go into my inbox and mm. do you use it in norwegian or in, or in english I, uh, norwegian mm. and that works okay yeah it does she's uh, she's a little stupid um when it comes to like foreign names and uh, and uh, you know some of the uh, things I would like her to, uh, you know, uh, understand without telling her, it, uh, but it is, I will understand it after when I, I get to the office, mm. I will remember what it is. So, yeah. uh, but um, and she sometimes misspells something, but that's not important. Just, I just need to, need to understand what I just said. So when I, uh, when I clarify and organize that, I will just have to rem understand it when then, and, and that's, it is enough. And the, mm. And one of the things that I really love is that um, when I'm in a call and I, 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 I call up uh, hang up, I can tell a bit even I think if, I never tried that. Maybe I should try that. No, maybe not. It's not going to work. But uh, after I call, I can say, remind me of this. And mm, uh, yeah. she will remind me of that call. Uh, or uh, remind when I'm in a text, remind me of this. Or if I'm in Apple Mail remind me of this and then that email will be attached to so i can just get quickly back to that whatever it is i was doing mm. uh, and I, tr I truly enjoy that but it is of course you you have to be somewhere where you actually can talk to yourself or to your watch <laughs> it's kind of like yeah um yeah and uh, if, but but if you are in a um, you know in a, in a space where you can't and, and i still like physical capturing I don't know what, what why that is, but it is it is helpful for me. So, mm. anything else that you have in your uh, Road Warrior setup 
that might be no not in the road warrior version um but obviously i have some some things set up in my uh, on my physical office desk where we are recording mm -hmm. this right now that would differ from um, from that i don't know if we want to go go that route as well or do you want to wrap up the the road warrior version of the office first yeah i was i was thinking that um because it it, it is the road warrior and the, the open clear the open office um clean desk um uh, environment that's going to be the same so your road warrior will be mm -hmm. also the what you need there so it might be uh, i call it road warrior because it's it functional it's functional for both the open office and uh, the road warrior setup so um no i i'm the only thing that i can think of that i i have with me is an action support folder um so if i have something i need to get done like if i am i know that i will um swing by the local hardware store to uh, to exchange um you know to buy something new where i have a receipt then i will or you know what exchange uh, some goods in a hardware store that's not very often i do but you need a receipt then that will be in my action support material mm -hmm. folder yeah um and that's the only thing in addition to what we just said that's with me do, and you don't have anything else in your bag that's no, that that no? that really is that really mm. is it no the the uh, the inbox my ipad support folder mm. and uh, to home um mm. that's that's really all there is and something to write mm. with and of course the, the capture one that we mm. should not mention yeah, and 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 the and the one of the things that I've uh, I've been thinking about, uh, you know, we talked about be intentional and, uh, and be intentional to remove friction. Um, I'm sure that you are intentional with the bag you use. Um, maybe people mm -hmm. would like to know what that is. Yeah, and that would help if you explain yours first, because then I can look what mine is called. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will I will get it. And then they both left. <laughs> <laughs> we both left the stage. No, I, uh, I, uh, I am using um, a, a slim um, backpack, and uh, it's um, it's uh, from from a company called Mark Ryden, and it's just a standard slim backpack. Um, it's very light, um, and it has just one big room where I can have my um, my um, MacBook inside and uh, my um, whatever I need to take of charges and such and then uh, an after room uh, for um, pens and you know whatever else I need to carry it's, it's fairly small mm. it's not very big but it is very functional it's easy easy to carry and it's it's black and it's like look um, businessy enough that I feel I can get away with a backpack <laughs> yeah so. um mine actually i think um i think i asked about this actually on the internal forums that we have in vice learning i think yuka bachman from finland recommended this one uh it's from tuscany leather so it's actually sort of a mm -hmm. brown um, over the shoulder Ooh. bag like this Ooh. yes um and it's um yeah it works really well ages nicely um had it for I guess a year now and it's yeah looks basically as it did when when it was brand new has mm -hmm. my last name engraved at the bottom as well so I uh, won't get uh -huh. get lost should anyone else have it so yeah no um, really really en enjoyed this one so that's mm. uh, certainly a recommendation for mine yeah and it is it is we are now talking about and I understand we have a you know kind of a, 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 what we call a, a pattern here is that we we both use things we like that gives us i think that you, you have, it was an intentional buy because i'm not going to ask you how much that costs because i'm sure that is not uh, exactly cheap what you have but it is uh but it fills you with joy doesn't it 
Yeah, and actually, I think pricing wise, I think so we both had the same bag earlier, because that's what I um, yeah. I stole that idea from you, the old, uh, yeah. the Evernote, Evernote one, the gray yeah. one. Yeah, yeah so I think it was about the bag. same price, okay. actually. Yeah, ah. so that was a nice one. I still use that actually to um, um, for one of the laptops that I might bring to a, a seminar. So if I'm doing a, mm. a Windows specific setup, um, I have my Windows Surface and it's actually in that bag. Mm. So still use that one as well. Yeah, and that, that is uh, the triangle commuter bag, I think it's called Evernote. And I'm mm. sad they st stopped selling that because m mine got worn a little out. It wasn't, it isn't as beautiful as it is once was. But I wish mm. somebody would take up that design again because it was perfect for, for uh, if you want to have a, um, um, what do you call it, cross, what do you call it, cross bag? No. Mm. Yeah, just over the shoulder. Uh, yeah, over the shoulder, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, and it is because it was fairly uh, comfortable to carry, and I, it was the the functionality of of the bag it made it uh, into a very functional little office. You open the bag, mm. you just open the 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 flap, and suddenly everything was available to you. Um, and it could stand on its own. I think I, yeah. I still miss that uh, that ability. And you know, your in tray was right there, and yeah, it was very nice. Yeah. Yes, we, yes, we it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you missed that. So if somebody knows who makes, if there's somebody start making them, because I I remember a, a couple of years ago I started looking for that again, and I found that nowhere in the world where I looked at it I could find the same. It's made in originally mm. in Japan, I think it is a Japanese brand, uh, very high quality. I love that bag. So That's again, nice. podcast at GTD and sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in it. I'm still in it. I'm still in the GTD Nordic days, but it is Vital Learning. So podcast at vitallearning.dk if you know um, where you can buy those. And I can, you know, you can find it secondhand in eBay and such, but I would like to prefer to buy it new. And maybe if hmm. they made a letter one, Lars, think about that. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, now, we are to, now we are talking. <laughs> now, now we're talking. Now how much would you pay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... Um, I, I, we are going to be the, the expensive show this uh, for people. But, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's get back to intentional um, uh, designing of your office. So, so now let's go to if you have a um, the possibility to design your own office and your or your own home office space. Um, how would you go about doing that? How would you plan that, Loris? Well, I'm um, just, you know, as we were preparing, um, I just quickly, you know, brainstormed the different components that I have in, in my office. Um, we just talked about capture tools. I have the old one. I think we mentioned that in the tool setup episodes as well, the Exacompta, um, the French one. Um, which I still enjoy very much. Um, as for a pen, um, I still haven't graduated to the, you know, really appreciating my pen level. Yeah, you're showing the one that I have as well. Um, mm. So I just have one of the old, again, GCD Nordic pens <laughs> that I yeah. that I use for for this. Um, mm. Just a you know a, a, an in tray setup, a picture of my family, nice screen setup. Mm. You know, good good big desk. I think that actually made a difference um, for me. I had a you know temporary workspace uh, at, at at one point, and really having everything set up and and accessible and and room to actually work when I need that space. It's just so, mm. so valuable. So a nice big desk that I can, can, can lower and raise uh, when I want to uh, mm. stand. That, that's been really, really helpful for me. Mm. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And uh, I, I have the same, um, the same idea. I have a different desk than, than you. I don't have a, you know, what do you call it? A sit and stand desk, but it is, a, I have a, how would you say that the, um, a computer workspace where I can that I can hydraulically lift very fast and easy, um, and I also have an in tray. Not that it is very often in use anymore because the world isn't as physical as it was. Um, mm. And when I um, when I'm out and about, uh, that's probably in the receipt system what, what I have the most. So I need to take care yeah. of that lives in my my red in folder in my bag. Uh, yeah, and and we we are specifically, you know, both of us. Um, I don't know if I also have a, a, f um, a photo of my family. I have a photo. Uh, sorry, I ha and I also have a place where I can put things I want to memorize. I don't know if you use that, but that's a, a trick I learned or I understood was 
good for me many years ago, but it is, um, I have a, a felt um, divider wall in the office where I can uh, pin pieces of paper on. And now it, I'm trying to under, remember, because I I used to, and I want to be uh, still the, the the abbreviation guy. The So, so for instance, yeah, I, you know, what's the, what does uh, GIF in GIF or GIF stand in for? You Graphics know? interchange format. Next question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, 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 now I will ask you, what does in chat GPT, what does the GPT stand for? Oh, that I don't know. No, generative pre-trained transformer. So there you go. <laughs> 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 no, but it is. It, <laughs> I don't, these are some little um, things I want to remember or memorize. Like I want to make, mem I have another note, um, uh, how to make a line shift in Google Sheet inside a cell. And that is control, alt, enter. So, okay, I will, if I don't remember, I will look there. Ah, and then after a while it will be uh, committed long-term memory or it will be in my muscle memory and then I can just mm. toss it away. So. And yeah, that's that's been a, um, a valuable part of my GTD setup because I don't want to have cluttered a cluttered desk with all pieces of paper of things I need to remember um, or want to make um, into my long term memory. But 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 when you come into um, uh, a GTD years office, because I I walk into GTD years office all the time when we do the, the coaching or. At, pre-COVID uh, a lot now, not as often in physical, but still, um, I'm looking at, are they intentional with their office? Is everything mm. in, does everything has a space? Does, um, does everything has a function? And the function, function can be d decor. Uh, as long as you're intentional, uh, intentional on what's in your work in my environment, um, uh, if you're intentional, then you have, um, you will not have anything in your workspace that pulls on your attention, like, mm. you know, stacks of ha, huh, which is what we <laughs> probably don't like. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know what a stack of ha huh is, that's a stack of paper where it, it, you can look at each one of them and say, ha, huh, what is this? And uh, buy some... Uh, uh, maybe idea at the time you take, uh, maybe I need to take, um, I'm, I need to save this, maybe I will need it later, or maybe I will move on this later, and then it becomes a stacks of, a stacks of huh. Um, but I, one of the most, I don't know if you do this ever, but sometimes my, my desk get a little cluttered, a little too many things there. And one of the things I really enjoy is cleaning up, <laughs> just tossing mm -hmm. things away and make it clean and then step away, go to the toilet or something and come back and just see my pristine workspace. And then I'm, Ooh. <laughs> I like to do that, especially on Fridays, making sure that everything is just so I know when I show up Monday morning, that'll just mm. be nice and nice and ready. That works really well mm. for me. Um, speaking of acronyms, I think REDS was the one that we, uh, I don't know if we still use it, reference, equipment, decoration, and supplies, right? That, those yep. were the four categories that we would be looking mm. for. And and really, you know, much in line with what you're saying, um, what I would be looking for is things that should not be there, <laughs> getting getting mm. rid of things. Um, so yep. if you were to come to my office, you would see very little, I would say, just the, the bare minimum of what I actually need on a on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. there'll be some things like I have a, a wall full of drawings from The Voice um, over here, not really uh, necessarily a productivity enhancement, but I like it. <laughs> but, but really much of what is it? That motivates yes, you, so sure. oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have kids. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, so what I'll typically look be looking for is um, probably you know, things like support material, things like support mm -hmm. material that they have a space to be in. And again, you've probably seen this over the years as well, that this can really take so many different shapes and forms and making sure that you have the the setup at the office that you need to to support this. So, mm. you know, I had a had one guy who made these uh, prototypes of machines. He would get 
bent uh, pieces of, of metal back to his inbox. So his support material yep. was, you know, steel shelves in the basement, um, had an HR business partner, supported five different um, um, teams in the organization. She wanted to bring some materials with her all the time when she went to meetings with those, di those different teams. So we set up mm -hmm. a hanging uh, file for her just to grab the, the correct mm -hmm. uh, corresponding folder when she left the office, brought that with her. So making sure that you have a good, nice place for, you know, support material, um, mm. perhaps an outbox if you need it, uh, obviously a, a trash can. Um, mm. I have a whiteboard as well that I use sometimes for getting an overview of things. Um, like to, to play with that as well. Mm. So, so things like that are really valuable to, to me. Yes. And I also do have some, you know, hanging folders or it is a, you know, my, my project, um, archive system so when something is finished if there's any physical material it goes into uh, my archive system and um, that brings us a little back to you mentioned uh, initially that we got an email or you sorry you, you worked with um, uh, some people and they mm -hmm. had uh, physical um, archiving and they had um, since they were going to set up a new space, how do they do that? And um, yeah. yes, how do they do that? Yeah, <laughs> that, that is indeed the, the question. Again, yes. so your, your, your reference uh, setup needs will of course vary and that depends on what you need to have room for. So hmm. like you, I have a hanging file folder system behind me just out of the, the, the camera shot and it's, hmm. um, it works well for me. Um, I have not put much new stuff in there. I mean, that's like once, once a month, I think now, mm. because I have so much of what I need, I definitely still need it because I need to, you know, place the, um, I have some vouchers that I need to have accessible. I have some trainer materials, guides for different uh, webinars, things like that. Mm. So for most of my needs today, it's really just going over there, picking the one I need. And then when I'm done mm. with it, putting it back. Um, but in this, this specific scenario, there were sort of two characteristics that I think we can share. One being that there was um, um, at least a larger volume than, than, than in my needs. Um, mm. The other one was that there were two people using mm. the, the reference system setup. So exactly. that's also part of the reason why I wanted to bring this up because I was curious to hear your thoughts on how that might work, any experience in how to, to set that up? Because obviously we are all different people, different needs, different ways of organizing mm. when, we, when we share them. How, how does that work? What would you recommend? No, the fir first I would, would um, I, I, think it, I think it makes sense that uh, if they have material that both need to reference, then they should have one system. Uh, that's my first uh, thinking and the second uh, think or maybe a three systems where it's then but then it gets complicated because then you will have some place where they would put uh, their you know their their common or what they have to the reference system that they have to to work on together and then two separate ones for two personal ones but um but my I, well it depends, but um, from what you say, I would say just one system if if they need to share, or two system if that's not necessary to share information, and then then I would put on the top of the the order of the day. Um, get into alignment and agreement on how you would name your folders. How do you mm. structure your information so that they, especially if you are sharing your 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 system if there's a shared system at some point uh, get very clear on how you name things and how you make it um, accessible how do you sort them so yeah. and um, and i've been using all the time and i'm still still using that the the, the a to c uh, folders where you um, uh, have a system for and, the, and the, this is where it gets a little tricky so if they are doing clients it might be the client name on the on the folder or is the project within that client so it might start with the client and then the project name for the folders and just then archive them from a to z that's would be my 
first take on that what's what would your take mm. be Lars? no exactly and then that's also what i recommend you know thinking a bit about how you then organize it, it then by yeah it could be like a client it could be by you know areas of focus it could mm. yeah depends on on really the the content and um i think i guess my best reference so so the archive that uh, that we have here at the office that's really my setup uh, i'm the only one using it so it's pretty straightforward mm. um at home we have a shared uh, shared archive um setup and um, I think it's just never really been a challenge, perhaps because the complexity of what we put in there is pretty low. So yeah. I think that's probably why it has not um, shown up as, as, a, as a challenge, because what we put in there is passports. Well, that's going to go under P. We don't really have to you know, think of you know, too many different uh, ways of, of organizing those. So for our very simple needs there, it really hasn't come up as an, as an issue. Um, but it's yes. like you said, I can only echo what you said that, that, you know, being clear on how you label things so you know how to find mm. them. And that, mm. that's a good starting point. Um, perhaps also reflect on whether it needs to be a shared archive or whether it could be really could be separate archives. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just to, if you don't to, need to, to see each clearer. other's stuff, then have two separate. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. That might also also be an approach. Um, mm. And I do see this with, you know, I have a, a coaching client comes to mind where they had this, they had a shared drive space working in sales, um, sales manager in, in a few countries. Uh, other countries were using the same structure, but not mm. diligently. Um, mm -hmm. So there was a lot of um, cleanup to be done when they migrated yes. from one uh, one uh, backup platform to another. Mm. Um, but really, you know, being being clear on that, it's uh, it's tedious it's time consuming but it's so helpful in the end when you actually yeah. need to find things and you can just quickly find them yeah i'm, I'm reminded of um, we got an email from our uh, listener um, who suggested a book and a, and a podcast for us uh, where where it's a lot about how do you structure your stuff so you can find it so so you don't put uh, t-shirts in your socks drawer because that's not where you expect to find them um, this this idea um, got me thinking. I got inspired, and I'm now experimenting with uh, the potential of a folderless uh, um, um, f f uh, filing system for okay. digital documents. Yes. So it's and just a stack. <laughs> no, it's just just, just yeah. It's, it's a stack of huh, but it makes it makes. But it is well. It's not a stack of huh because <laughs> you, you, you're trying to. I almost got you. <laughs> no, you didn't, because it, it is it is intentional that is in there. The stack of huh is is an unintentional um, stack yeah. of things you haven't decided on. But if something and, and let's be clear, people, that what we are talking about now is a reference system is materials uh, the digital or physical that you need to see again maybe later for reference if it is any action con connected to it that need uh, actions need to be extracted and put in the next action system and yeah. then maybe a, at a, at, at, with a link or a, some kind of reference to where you will find it later um, i think that is so so important but if you have reference material like i have uh, a contract with a client, I have a receipt when I, uh, when I do something with the company, I have a personal receipts, I need to find, uh, um, you know, and, and there's uh, tons of documents and, 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 um, and for those of you, I think at some point, not far from, well, how many episodes is that? I don't remember, but you remember I talked about my filing system, my, my nomenclature for, for naming files. And mm. I'm using that now where I used uh, the year, the dash uh, month, dash date, and then uh, what is it, um, what, um, and what's the status, and go back and re revisit that. Um, uh, what I've done is I've created, uh, and now we are getting on to a, you know, in a rabbit hole here for two seconds, but bear with us because it's, it's exciting. Whee! No, but I'm using, I'm using a text expander to name the files. So if I have a file, I need to, to, um, to, um, to uh, um, you know, make a reference of what I do is that I change the name of the file using the text expander snippet that helps me to remember my nomenclature. So I will, I'm asked all the question. I just fill in the blanks and then click save, and then it's it changed it changes the name. And when it's changed from my inbox, it automatically get filed. 
<laughs> using Automator. <laughs> <laughs> I built the uh, Automator uh, scripts that will uh, from the Mac Automator that will then look at the folder and will set if it's it, if it is a if it has the name receipt, then move it to this uh, folder. And um, it could actually go. And what I'm I'm trying to do, I'm not sure if I will ever get there. But I am also looking for the folder less where I will just have one place which is called my reference, and then I will use uh, smart folders. Smart folders is search folders where you can search on different criteria. So it's if it is uh, within 2022, uh, it's a receipt and it is from, you know, um, regarding lunch, then that will be one folder if I wanted to, to, to slice and dice it like this. But but that is I'm trying to do that now and, and I'm excited of what I'm seeing is it's the, um, as long as you set up the necessary folders. It could be the folderless archiving system. Eee, I'm excited. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, I don't know what what, what do you think about this? That's it. That's, <laughs> you want to try this? <laughs> no, I think that's you know one of the the areas where we differ the most in in the in the different needs that we have. Um, okay. You have a much more. Um, advanced archiving system um it it i mean i would just search for that why would you have a smart folder it's just searching it so no, again no, no. we but, we, yeah. we differ but 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 instead of having a folder create a folder somewhere that you might or might not remember you have uh, uh, about contracts from from clients then why not just create that smart folder and just be good at be intentional at your file naming and it would automatically show up <laughs> but then I'm I could saying, get, forget the name of the smart folder. I, that's the no, same no, applies no. to, yeah, well, to both that, pieces. That, no, no, the smart folder will be in the sidebar of your finder. Which a normal folder could also be. <laughs> I'm sorry, I may it be could, missing something. Could be, could be. Yeah, but, but it, is, it, is, it is as long as you're intentional with... Um, I'm just saying that I don't want to... I want to create one folder and wherever I put things like this folder here, I have to, um, I mean, for instance, I have uh, work receipts and I have personal receipts, receipts. Sometimes I don't remember where I put it because sometimes I buy things for the office that I use uh, also personally and, you know, my spare time. And, and I don't remember which folder I put them. So instead of looking for it, I, of course I can then, because I'm very intentional about my, I can search for that. But also if I had then just two folders, one for personal and one for professional receipts, that will be very easy to find. No matter where I put them, I can, I can f f uh, archive them and uh, I can be really, really tired one day and archive it under uh, a different folder, but I will still find it. Okay. <laughs> You're not excited. No, okay. okay. I, I am not. Well, it's just because I don't have that need. Um, I don't no, okay. archive all those receipts if they have to go into, if I need them for bookkeeping, they go into the bookkeeping software. If mm. I need them personally, they go into the receipts uh, um, pocket okay. that I have at the home office. Um, and that that's it. I don't have any any other any other needs, but I know you're not alone. I mean, we we see that in the emails that we get that people. I really like modern systems, so I'm not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just don't have that need, so yeah. so I don't need the need, need to have that kind of advanced uh, advanced setup. Yeah. No, no, but what what I'm what I think that you need as a bare minimum though is is to be have a naming convention, if or at least an uh, I intentional file file naming so it's, if it is not just scan 3254-6.pdf and then you can't find it again and then just rename it to something that makes sense to you so it is easy to make a search at least no matter where it goes agreed yeah. sure that's that's a bare bone <laughs> system <laughs> Let's uh, let's 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 agree agree to to agree on that one. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Um, uh, anything we've forgotten to mention here about? Um, no, I think just you know, over, as as we take a step back and and overall set up, you know, have have a good you know computer computer that works yeah. well. Um, you know, a nice uh, nice. Uh, yeah, exactly. A nice, uh, you know, keyboard, nice uh, mouse, a nice printer, a nice list manager, whatever works for mm. you. Um, um, again, another place that we differ. I have two screens here at the office. 
um, mm. as we spoke about last time. Um, I cannot live with with just one screen. Um, I, I've actually, you know, um, as, as we've spoken about before, I, I, I bought mm. the iPad Pro and um, I was sort of uh, not sure whether that was really in the end the right thing for me to purchase. Um, and I'm still not sure about that, but, but part of the main reason that I that I um, feel less productive using it is that uh, is that I only have one screen. So that's mm. part of a reflection I, I came across recently where, mm. you know, when I'm here at the office, I'll have my, you know, at different times during the, the, the day, I'll, I'll open different pieces of software. I'll want, um, you know, my uh, one email that I got on, on one side and then my response mm. on the other side so I can respond to each of the sections that were in that email, for example. Mm. Um, I know I can set that up and I've started to do that on the iPad, but that's really what it comes back to that I need that kind of kind of screen space. So for me, definitely two screens uh, to, mm. to, to work from. Yeah, I, I also have two screens, but uh, the second screen is my, you know, my I use my MacBook Air as my main driver. And that also goes on the big, big uh, 27 or mm. 27 inch isn't big anymore, but it is big ish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but and then I have a um, 13 something, I think, inches. Um, um, MacBook Air yeah. screen as well, so I keep the calendar there just to keep an overview mm. where I might where am I at oh, yeah, today nice. and uh, yeah. mm. just to just to have that as a reference. So when I move yeah. through my day and I I get uh, deep dive into something, I lost the feeling of time and space. I can just glance up and see if oh, <laughs> am I getting close mm. to something? I need to <laughs> get out of my bubble. Um, yeah. No, otherwise, I think, you know, it really comes back to what you said uh, originally, which is that that friction free. So depending mm -hmm. on your needs, I mean, I have my uh, drawers next to me with all mm -hmm. the different uh, things that I might need to have at hand, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for, for, yeah, for different, different things. Um, having that that available, you know, swivel distance, the swivel distance <laughs> yeah. from from my my, uh, my chair that works, uh, mm -hmm. works really well. Um, I think that's 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 pretty much the the setup that I have. Uh, printer mm. nearby, yeah, all good. Mm. Yeah, I just want to go back to just for just one second or half a minute to go back to the intentional um, you know, setting up uh, to remove friction, and and just go into computers and uh, and to um, especially mobile phones. I I meet people who are, and this is one of my pet peeves, and I'm. I think I mentioned this before on the podcast that I meet people who are, you know, in this um, um, well-paid, uh, um, you know, at a well-paid part of the of a company, and and they are are supposed to deliver on their deliverables. They have KPIs and they have demands on them, and they're using suboptimal tools like an old PC that is bugged down. You know, it, it takes four four or five minutes to start when you restart it and and that uh, your phone is old and it's not very functional you need a bigger screen or 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 it's um you know it's not working properly then then th this is just the same as giving a butcher a dull knife you never do that because uh, mm. uh, the job takes longer time and you can cut yourself with a dull knife so don't do that and uh, be intentional on your and if you have, you are, uh, you know, have a, a, a PC that's all and not working well, consider, you know, get a new one if possible. And, and don't be, don't be a Scrooge yourself for that. <laughs> it's, 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 it's saving on the wrong things. There's a lot of other things you can save money on, but not on that. Not equipment. Equipment, a tool for a, a, a knowledge worker needs to be sharp. It needs to be friction free. Mm, yeah, no, I agree. And one last thing, very important for my productivity, um, a good coffee machine. That, that also helps <laughs> <laughs> in an optimal GTD space uh, for me. Good coffee, yeah. that uh, that works well. Did you see uh, my coffee mug? Mm, yeah. Do you know what it is? Very uh, space, spacey. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's um, this is my as you know, uh, Lars. Uh, tomorrow is my sixtieth birthday, so I'm getting older mm -hmm. and old. Mm -hmm. uh, I will not be in my fifties anymore. I will be in my sixties, as people around me keep telling me. <laughs> but this is uh, this is an ember mug, and it's just a, a thermos mug with a battery and a heater built in, 
and it keeps oh. my coffee hot because I'm when I drink coffee I get uh, the first part is uh, hot and then I forget it and then I drink it and it gets cold and I, I <laughs> and I, I have two two options either to just you know sw swivel it down and or 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 go go um, tossing the the, the the coffee in the in the sink and pour me a new one but this keeps it warm for an hour and a half on the battery and i can also set it down on my my um my uh, stand here a little um uh, coaster and it charges it automatically it takes about an hour mm. to charge for full and it is um, um i just had it for a couple of days but uh, that makes uh, big sense i also have a good coffee maker here so yeah take good that care was an of important you. tip as well make, make sure yeah. you have the right right things that you need <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Loris, will you take us out, please? Happy to do that. And we always do that with a quick reminder to head on over to vitallearning.eu. Have a look around at the website there. You'll find more information about the different offerings that we have in, in Vital Learning with, within GTD, but also with uh, crucial conversations, for example. So go over there, have a look around or navigate to the different country websites to learn more in those uh, local languages. For those of you outside the Nordics, head on over to cruciallearning.com. It will direct you to the local partners. We also like to mention that there is something called the GTD Summer Camp. It takes place in 2023 as well as it has in the past few years. This year is June 17 to 18. But it might be the case that we actually don't have any more tickets by the time you listen to this. So as we are recording this, there are three tickets left and both Morten and I know of people that will still sign up. If you're still thinking about it, don't think anymore. gcdsummercamp.com, go there, read more about it and sign up. Yes. And I think we might make a waiting list as well for those of you who might not make it in time, see what we can do if we, uh, if we are able to find some, some more spaces, for example. But yes. to be sure to, to reserve your seat, be sure to, to book right away. Go, go, go. And how many, um, when we are fully booked with the three that we like, how many? Will we, I will be 40 do? this year, I think. Uh, that, that's mm -hmm. uh, the starting point that we, we've set up. And that's, I think, a good good number, 40, 45 maybe, um, that we'll, we'll find at, uh, at Kubikstan, where mm -hmm. we are having the, uh, the event. Mm -hmm. But if the people and uh, if the if you run out of uh, spaces will the the you will not be able to book a ticket or no that's right so so we'll certainly look into the possibility but i doubt there will be mm. much more room because we were i think 35 34 last year um and i thought that was pretty pretty suitable for the room and we might fit mm. fit in five more people without any issues maybe five more than that um mm -hmm. but um yeah I think that's that's probably the the, the 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 maximum amount of people that will be this year. So, um, be sure to sign up quickly. Morten will be there. I will be there. Both of our wives will be there as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, come and, you know. and meet meet us and, and a lot of the trainers in the Nordic region and the people are coming from all over the world. So you are most welcome. <laughs> Yes, Indeed. and and uh, don't forget to click uh, like and subscribe, give us a rating <laughs> wherever you listen to us. It's highly appreciated. And uh, if you have a comment or something you would like to tell us, please let us know by sending us an email at podcast at gg. Ah, oh, there I go again. <laughs> <laughs> Old habits die hard. That's for sure. <laughs> Did you have that on your learning. on your wall so you remembered it? I will. Try, <laughs> I will try and put it on my little my felt wall. So my felt divider wall. So it's a podcast at vitallearning.dk is the correct uh, address. So please uh, send us an email. Uh, anything else we need to say before we wrap up? I think that's that's about it. Hope this mm -hmm. was uh, helpful as always. And um, you yeah. know, reflecting on you might not be designing a new office, but just reflecting on the workspace that you have, perhaps mm -hmm. on the go, perhaps as a you know um, uh, at a hotel, wherever it mm -hmm. might be. Just reflecting on that you have the right tools, removing friction, like mm -hmm. you said, Morten. I think that's a yep. that's a good um, good way to wrap it up. Yep. And um, until next time, as always, stay safe and stay productive. And remember, podcast at Vital Learning DK. Bye bye. <laughs>
please let us know by sending us an email at podcast at gg ah there i go again <laughs> 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 Old habits die hard, that's for sure. <laughs>